All right, who wants to sum up our, our most recent adventure? Uh, uh, we were trying to we trying to figure out how the heck we can ever meet at the same time in the same place again. <laughs> we all meet up somewhere at the Pathfinding Society, and we're like, "Dudes, I haven't seen y'all in like four months since we went to that like crypt, and that dog almost killed us." Fun so, times, fun times. Yes. That was like three months ago. What's up with that? <laughs> what y'all been doing? Bought a rope. <laughs> Bought a rope. <laughs> it will be the uh, the tie that binds you all together in the future. Hey, Adam, you didn't actually answer my question if I have my beer and uh, small cask or... You, I mean, you can do that instead of making money off of it if you want to. Yeah. Okay. That's well, what I was saying. Yeah. Then yeah. take that ten gold and shove it. That's fine. It's only ten gold, and this way I don't have to be making ale all the time, and I can actually have like real ale. Yeah. This is this is real, uh, substantially more pleasant consumptive alcohol. Hey. Hey. My magic ale is still very good. Your magic ale is is passable, but it's not something people would probably spend money on. And they don't. Yeah, they really don't. I normally just give it away. Um. Uh, so you guys itching to go on a new mission? When, yeah, if I am. Ever, um, the gods of. Absalom have ready for us to do. Well, you meet with uh, Amber Spalson, who, um, after he, he gives you plenty of notice, you're going to meet in the late afternoon um, to be prepared for a long voyage. Um, that should not be too much of um, an exciting adventure. Um, he gathers you all together and says, All right. Well, I know that you've seen your share of um, stress, and the last few missions have been a little bit uh, overwhelming, to say the least. So, uh, this is uh, uh, this is going. We're going to send you way down south to Sargava um, to supervise a, a botanical expedition. We have a, a member down there who is um, exploring. Uh, some of the, the westernmost reaches of uh, the Mwangi Expanse uh, through Sargava. You're to meet with him at Eladar and um, basically provide security for his expeditions. It's uh, you're, You'll be heading into untracked jungles and the place is dark and dangerous and we just need you to make sure that he survives. Um... His name is Korvash. Um, the route we're sending you is going to go. Uh, we hit. We have a. We have a ship arranged to take you all the way to Corentin. At that point, um, you are to arrange transport to south to Eladar on your own. Um, we've got a letter of credit here that should be more than enough to to get you on any ship that you desire, but the uh, the route around the Eye of Abandango is something that the Pathfinder Society generally does not <coughs> do well with, so having a more experienced uh, pilot or captain might, might be better for you. Uh, what else you guys want to know? Um... That map's really blurry. Oh, there it is. So, we're currently in Absalom, and we're going where? So, you're going to go from Absalom to uh, all the way out here to Quarantir. Draw that again? Oh. Wait, show again? Too far up on the map. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then from there we're going to From Illabar. there you need to arrange your own travel from Corintir south to Eladar. Eladar. Wow. 
this is going to be a voyage of probably several months or weeks and then the expedition could take up to a month so hopefully this can be light duty and something that you won't um won't have to stress too much i've been getting word from some of the other venture captains that were pushing our up-and-coming agents a little too hard <laughs> Well, they kept setting us after these invincible statues. Uh, yeah, about that. Um, some of the if you get if you get deep into the screaming jungle, which is a possibility, there are several uh, uh, temples and, su and such that may have um, statue esque guardians to be aware of. No. Oh. Is it the jungle that's screaming, or is it us that's screaming in the jungle? All of the above. <laughs> no, you, you just heard it. it's the streaming jungle. They have Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> it's a streaming jungle. And we're just supposed to be this man's bodyguard, then. Right. So he has a he, he has a team of um herbalists and botanists with him. There are extremely important alchemical ingredients that are always being found in these um, deep jungles. Mm. So this is an exploratory mission. There's no sites you need to worry about. There's no ulterior motives that need to be on your agendas. Just or ensure our, uh, that Corvash succeeds in finding something worth our time. Is there anything, any particular alchemic material that we should be on the eye out for? Um... I, he's the expert. You, you, he'll give you more details once you arrive. Fair enough. Oh, you know those uh, explorer types. So walk into a dragon's den unless you stop them. So be careful. Uh, do you have any other questions? I, I don't have any. No, I'm good. I'll know what I'm in for. I made sure to buy three more Alchemist Fire before we set out, though. Oh, your point. ship's going to set out within a few hours, so you have a little bit of preparation time in Absalom to make any other purchases you want. I get three more Alchemist Fire, we're going to have to six. Punish my rations, that's about it. Not sure if I even bought any or used any, but who knows. I'm eating butt. Don't eat butt. Yeah, eating butt is probably not very healthy. I mean, if it's, if it's your king, go for it. I'm eating cereal. I got a question. Just never go ass to mouth. Um, demons, gorillas, um, demon gorillas, plant monsters, um, natural monsters such as crocodiles and um, swarms of blood-sucking locusts. Malaria. Uh, as well as uh, indigenous yeah. people and pirates. Like I said, this should be a simple low-stress expedition. Can I get some uh, bugger pellet at the store? So what? Do we need bugger pellet? Like deep? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to get the Zika, man. Off. You gonna get pregnant? Yeah. Tygon's really worried about that. He should be. Actually, clerics in the Pathfinder world, I don't think they have like a vow of celib celibacy or anything. Some so. of them have a vow of very much not celibacy. Yep. I'm ready. I'm not um, convinced that that answered your question in a manner that you are comfortable with. <laughs> oh my god, what are my new spells? My spells aren't on my character sheet. Yeah, they are. <clears throat> your new spell was up the walls. You got Wall Walker, remember? Yeah, it's just... Oh, I see, I see. Um, let me pull up 
the pages for those, but let's go ahead. All right. Um, so the journey from Absalom to Corentin is super boring. Um, I think this is the farthest single travel that you've made so far in your careers, and that's just no, the, fir- no, the first level. No, no, from the fact that not, we went all into that northern icy hell. Did we? When did we do that? Uh, like three missions ago, and we like completely failed. And that oh yeah, that was with the happened. Viking people. The Druid died. Yeah. You. Okay, well, this is substantially uh, less exciting. How the heck did you even get there? We took a boat. Okay, so this should be similar to that. Okay. Um, uh, Quarantine, you don't have uh, much information about this place. Uh, it is in Chiliax, and it's a very popular uh, nave or shipping destination. There are lots of uh, Chilaxian uh, Navy members who are all about inspecting all kinds of ships and their cargoes, and pretty much anything that wants to go into the inner sea. Um, But you have a big letter of credit with Pathfinder Society on it, so you are welcome to shop for ships as you please. Can I do a diplomacy check around the docks area to see if I can't find the captain worth his salt to take us? You can. Do me a gather information check. Information. Okay. I don't have that one specifically on here, do I? So that's a straight D20, isn't it? Or is it... Uh, it's diplomacy. It's, it is diplomacy? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. First roll tonight is a little low, but I got a good modifier, so... Anybody else want to try? Who's helping me? Nobody wants to try. Okay. Um, so Me- not a lot of people... No. You find lots of people that are willing to take you north, like to Cantargo or Corvosa or Riddleport. Not a lot of people typically want to go south, it turns out, because you've got that big... I have Abendengo to deal with, which is the ceaseless hurricane that appeared when Aridan died, uh, or disappeared, allegedly died. Hmm. Um, let's see here. Looking for a, a thing here. I'm good at this. It's not, it's not like you won an award for it or anything. I didn't win an award. I won an acknowledgement that I've done it a lot. <laughs> eh. Um. Wow, I can't find this thing. Okay. Um. The. Uh, you're directed to a. Um, Restaurant typing. Uh, you're directed to oh. a, a captain named Kovac, who is, he gives you all the impression of being a, an old sea dog. He may or may not have at one time been a pirate, but he definitely has the independent naval captain regalia on. And his ship is named the Genevieve, which, for all you can tell, is a presentable, seaworthy ship. None of you are particular sailors. Um... When you meet him, uh, he says, So, headed south past the Eye of Abendago. I'm headed to Sargava. I got some passengers on board already, picking up more along the way. Uh, All right. Welcome to have you. Got anything special? Where are you picking up other passengers? Curious. No, well, a lot of people have places to go. We'll be dropping some off before there, too. Uh, making a stop in Ilzamagori and making a stop in Port Peril as well. 
I think we're. I think Blood Coast is probably on the agenda as well. Hey, can you tell us information about what these locations are that we might know? Uh, the places he just told you? Yeah, like the places we're going to be stopping on our path that we might. Um, so if you take a peek on the map, the map, you're going to sail from uh, Quarantin to Ismagordi. Okay. And then you're going to go around the island to Port Peril. Okay. And then from Port Peril, you're going to go to Blood Cove. And then Blood Cove to Eladar. Are any of these cities, like, particularly dangerous or anything? Uh, if you stay on the ship, you should be fine. Um... I wouldn't worry about any place except for possibly Blood Cove, but I've got friends that make sure that the Genevieve is always welcome. And I know a couple of local places if you wanted to stay on land for uh, the night. Um, but we'll be, I mean, this is primarily a passenger vessel. We just sail up and down the Eye of Abandango. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good living. Anybody that has a reputation of uh, being able to sail through the Sodden Lands is, you know, going to make a pretty penny at this line of work. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. I, I hey, we lost watch sure It's not that. nine o'clock. It's not nine o'clock. Why'd you disappear on us? <laughs> Big time. Um, Emergency. Yeah. I never told you I started streaming so you could send out the announcement, but I started streaming like twenty minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I said it out before we. Started, say, I'll tell you when we start, and they can watch. I'll just say, I forgot to put it out. Yeah, it's um, all background stuff. We're not adventuring yet. But yeah, he says, yeah, and the, the society is a good friend of mine. I've done business for him before, so the letter of credit will uh, we'll take you far. We don't really have any other choices, do we? We haven't found anybody else? No. Not, 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 not really anybody else wants to do business with you. Don't with that kind of a role. I, I, I start walking up on the ship. Great. Head on the right of credit. Start walking on the ship. Yeah, all right, I'll do the same. Thing. Great. You've all gotten on to the railroad tracks. And now there's a train coming right at us. I run down the dock in the opposite direction. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> And then go find a bar and kill the bartender. Huh? <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Um, there's you know there's some more business that goes on in the ship, and a few hours later, uh, eventually it sets off. And um, once you get out to more or less open water, you're pretty much keeping uh, the coast in sight to the left. But you know you get it's miles, so you get what a good hundred miles out to sea, and you can't see the ocean or you can't see the shore anymore. Um, uh, and the captain assembles all of the passengers, yourself, and as well as some other people that are on the ship. Um, and he's like, all right, I'm going to lay down the law here of this vessel, the Genevieve. Um, only got three rules on this ship. First rule, don't cause trouble for my crew. Second rule, don't cause trouble for each other. Third rule. Enjoy the sail. <laughs> um, all right, let's get you guys something to eat. You can make pleasant, talk to meet my crew members, do whatever you need to do. But this is gonna be a pleasant voyage, and I'm gonna we're, we're all gonna get what we need to go. I, I raise my hand. We're quick. Hang on. You yeah, have the, hail. Well, yes, we have hail. Then I'm happy. <laughs> All right, <laughs> kids these days starting younger and younger. Does <laughs> he can't tell him no? He may not be able to tell with the beard and all that. <laughs> Wakeboard. You don't need a board. You just walk on your armor. <laughs> um. So cool. Um. So sailing is somewhat pleasant. They feed you well. Apparently, um, eventually, you know, after a couple of days, you're just like, man, why is this food so great? And you meet the cook, who is this really fit guy. Um, 
Like, you expect to see, if, like, a chef that's, you know, the portly kind of round fella. It's not people. There's not enough people on here to cook. Uh, it's what, it, queen. He is very interested in... He's very pleasant, very jovial fella. Um, uh, but he's, like... He's kind of, like, working out the whole time he cooks. You know, whenever he's got a hand free, he's just, like, you know, lifting, uh, like, big heavy sacks of flour and just, like, doing squats and things. He's super buff. He's, like, super into working out just recreationally. He's like, yeah, I got bored on the ship one day, and I started doing push-ups. And it's like prison training, you know? You just... <clears throat> it's nothing else to do. Yeah. Cook and work out. I get you, man. <laughs> you know what I do when I'm bored? I don't work out. I drink. <laughs> Well, I gotta keep a straight head if I'm gonna keep all these people fed. All this time while I'm on the ship, I'm making liberal usage of the ale they provided. And, you know, the way I see it, the better I keep, you know, these meals coming, the less ship work I gotta do. This is this stuff's easy. Plus, it smells great. I mean, pirates aren't the best with their um, hygienic maintenance, if you catch my drift. <laughs> Um, so you sail and you arrive at is uh, Illus Magori Magordi. Yeah, that's a weird word. Um, you pick up some new passengers. Some of the old passengers leave, um, and not, not nothing exceptional happens there. Your next two stop. Oh no, it's people, isn't it? It's people. Um, and when you start rounding the Eye of Abandango. Um, you're keeping a very, very safe distance away from it, but you can see up in the sky that there is just this like huge storm head that you're on the far outside side of, and you're far enough away from it that you can't really see any storm action, but you hear rumbles, and you, you can feel crashes coming through the timbers of the ship shaking up through the ocean. Um, and this is the, you know, this is the worst of it. This is if, if anything bad were going to happen, it would be now, because pirates... Uh, patrol these areas all the time because they can slip into and out of the storm a lot more easily than merchant vessels can. Um, so, Captain, how close can you get to the eye of the storm? Can you go all the way through? It or can... <sighs> Better sailors than I can traverse it, but uh, mm. maybe in my youth in a, in a smaller vessel I could have made it through, but yeah, we, we've no reason to go there now, and uh, you best keep yeah. your eyes toward the west, so that way you put it in the back of your mind. Sure. Um, everybody give me a fort safe. <laughs> for the puking. Fort safe for the puking. There's my character sheet. I gotta learn how to do all this again. Put it an illusion. <laughs> no. Look at that beautiful fort safe. Woo! Iron stomach. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, that's actually that's actually wrong. I have mine plus six. Before it. So that actually should be twenty-four. That's gonna get all on my face. <laughs> that five is for um, Durhood. Mine's actually twenty-four, not twenty-two. All okay. right. I was looking at the base, not the total. Alright, um, and you make it, I mean, it's it's pretty, it gets rough at some points. It's definitely a lot more roller coastery than what you've been used to. Um, yeah, Durhood, the big big d dwarf with the stomach of iron is uh, looking kind of green. Um, restroom is looking kind of faceplate. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here drinking ale and swaying already. Yeah, I mean, so. you, 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 you're basically seasick 24-7, so what's the difference? <laughs> uh, you make it to Port Peril. You change passengers a little bit, and you make it to Blood Cove. Uh, at this point, things get uh, pretty okay. Um, hey, Marsha's back. So when do we tell her that Durvid just died? <laughs> Durhood, you critically fumbled a fortitude save. No! Why? <laughs> well, that dwarf just doesn't like being on the ocean. He just dived overhead before it got eaten by a shark. A swim is incredible. Yeah, but. Sharks! <laughs> no, you're fine. You just do up a little bit. Alright, um, everybody roll initiative. Where, where are we at? We're rolling initiative? Uh, right here. 
We're at Blood Cove. Here's my roll. Uh, initiative, initiative, yeah. initiative. It's so dangerous you have to roll initiative. <laughs> You're fighting the initiative. My initiative really cute. The turn tracker. Why is it giving me that turn tracker error? I don't know. Oh, because you have to have your token picked. That's fine. Um, oh, okay. But you don't have a token to pick, so no problem. Oh hey no, Marsh is double dipping with friends. Welcome to the internet. I don't know. Welcome to the internet. Adam, you've probably been at cons sure. with Mary since you go to con so much. If you've ever been like in this area for a con. Houston? I think Houston. once, Houston. maybe. There's our merch dealer. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we really appreciate it. What's going on? All right. Um, where do we make it to? Uh, where's Blanco? Where? Yeah, you, you make it to Blood Cove, um, you sure. successfully depart. Um, everything is dark and completely silent. Uh, Tygon, you begin to feel uh, sand and something wet. Wait, and I'm, well, oh, no. There's heavy pressure on your legs. And then suddenly, this searing pain in one of your feet. Is this an illusion? Do you have gout? Gout. No, the cook's hair is good. We've been eating very well. Oh, lovely. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, it should be black for everybody except for Tygon. Um, were we all asleep, or were we up on the deck, or what was up? You are not entirely sure. Uh, let's see here. Oh no, seventy-eight. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Tygon, you wake up with a searing <coughs> pain in your foot, and there's this horrible-looking thing just kind of nipping at it. Okay. Um. So. Am I able to move? Am I able to do anything? Yeah, uh, this is going to be what the initiative roll is for. And uh, everybody else, you are unconscious at this point. I'm curious how I am the only one conscious, but I'll take it. Because you're being nibbled on. I don't think I'm the only person being nibbled on, but... All right, uh, Tygon, you are super groggy and you're sickened and you're you're lying there prone. Am I able to see other people, all yeah. these other people? Yeah, you look to your left and to your right, you see all these other people, uh, your companions, as well as uh, several of the other passengers on the boat. All of you are laid out, um, like just in a line uh, with your feet toward the water. Uh, over your head, behind you, there is a whole bunch of gear, mostly weapons and things, that are piled up, uh, you know, in a very haphazard pile. Do I have my gear? Your gear, uh, you, you have, like, your personal effects on you, but, like, your shield, your weapons, uh, that's it's in that pile somewhere. Um, everyone else is unconscious. Do I know if casting, like, candle pods of energy to heal, will that wake them? Um, kill them and wake them or whatnot? Probably not. Nobody looks. Nobody looks seriously injured. 
Nobody looks injured, they're just all unconscious. Yeah, wait, you don't wait. look injured yourself. Well, actually, you took a point of damage from that thing. I'm you so, I, I seem to have missed how we fell unconscious. Were we asleep and then just woke up to this? Or? Did we actually get on the boat? I, I think we're... I think... I don't know what that is either. I don't think we're supposed to. Yeah, that, that is a moment of confusion right now. This just suddenly... You you found yourself on a beach. The prey on the high seas. <laughs> um, one minute I was on the high seas. The next minute, um, does it? If I were to nudge the people to be decided, would that wake them up? You could commit economy, action economy, and try it. If I, I would have to take it, a move action to stand up, wouldn't I? Uh, yeah. And that would be half my movement? And it would be all of your movement. Are we shackled? You're unconscious. Uh, can I, like, shackled? belly crawl towards the weapons? Yeah, you could do that. You could move half your speed without getting up. Okay. I want to belly crawl towards the weapons. I know I get the attack opportunity. No, it didn't take it. Uh, and as I'm moving to the weapons, I want to call out, WAKE UP, YOU IDIOT! <laughs> Settle. Why is the drunk one the only one awake? And I try to find my weapon. And my action is to find my weapon. Yeah, and you, you do find it. Um, let's see here. Does my yelling out wake anybody? Um, well, you are super nauseous and dis disoriented, um, and you're sickened, so it may be just a, uh, they'll get up, the, the sound of your voice plus the, the crashing ocean, um, it might be, it might take a minute. Try. Well, I can think try. Yeah. Okay, um... The uh, little little nibbly things keep just they're just they're just picking at people's feet, just experimenting, seeing what's going on here. Um, disturbing. Uh, they are big enough, horrible monster things that they might, you know, they they they're definitely potentially lethal. All right, uh, Sergio, you come to. Uh, awesome. You you are prone, you are sickened, you are disoriented, and there is a giant monster thing upon you. Well, it's a free action to scream like a little girl. So, <laughs> um, I look around, I see that there's a pile, I see that. The gnome is panicked and looking through it, and I say to myself, that's a great idea. So maybe I'll be panicked and look through it. So I will move over here. Okay. At that point, this one is going to try and, you know, grab you, stop you from slinking away. Um, so let's make an attack roll. Oh, uh, 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 oh you're making an attack roll. Okay. Real dice. Did not expect you to move. He critically fumbles it. Uh, it's just like, whoa, it's like you spooked him. He just kind of snips the air. Whoa. Um, now that half of you are awake, I'll show you a picture of what these things look like. Okay. So, uh... Oh, my. Oh, wow. oh dang. So, <laughs> would it take me an action to find my sword? And that would be my action? Yes. Would it be less of an action if I picked up the first weapon I came to and then went back and attacked one of them? Because as a fighter, I'm pretty much proficient in everything on the table. Well, everything is kind of laid out, so finding your weapon isn't going to take any more time. So if you want a particular uh, piece of equipment, you could get, uh, you know, Durhood's Urgrosh if you wanted it. But if you want your, your sword, it, you can grab it. So it wouldn't save me any time to just grab the first sword. Right, it wouldn't. Okay, well, in that case, I'll just grab my sword. Um, and 
I, I don't know if I have the time to grab my bow and arrow too, but I'll just grab my sword since they're all kind of up close and personal and I'll gather the rest of my effects later. Uh, and that'll be my action. All right. Uh, the one that tried to snip at you, it kind of comes to his senses. Um, and it grabs one of these um, uh, other other people, and it looks like it is starting to drag it back into the ocean. Um, uh, so it does that number. Uh, Tygon, you're up. So, um... I'm going to go ahead and just be aggressive as fuck here. And I'm going to cast a uh, spiritual weapon. Whoa. Um, right next to that motherfucker that's carrying someone off. All your, uh, you, you go and get whatever spell components and stuff you need. And it's still there and it's still functional, but you've been underwater for quite a time. <laughs> Do I have a problem casting it? No. And that spiritual weapon is going to attack that one, trying to trying to stop it from taking the person away. <laughs> All right, your spiritual weapon is a rapier, so we're going to throw down a uh, uh, we're going to throw down a beer mug. There. And I roll just my base attack for that. Uh, it's your base attack bonus plus your wisdom. Three, plus, three, plus. Wisdom bonus is another plus thirty. Wait. Yeah. Uh, eighteen will very easily hit it. Damage is D eight plus your level. Uh, it is killed entirely. <laughs> oh, these things aren't hard at all. Is there hey. way it? Yeah, it is super bad off from that. Save some of it for everyone else. Well, I got this from here on out. Don't just stay just unconscious if you want. I got this. Alright, all right. Um, the uh, the waves gently push her back up onto the water, but it may pull her out. You know, tides are weird. Um, Redstrom, you're still unconscious. Um, lame, lame. And hey, there's your voice. Hey. Well, we're we're actually doing a thing now, sir. You're so pretty sounding. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Um, the one on the end is gonna try and grab somebody. I'm gonna roll a d3 because it can grab three of you here. Uh, one will be Redstrom. Two will be uh, the lady in the middle and three will be Durhood. Uh, and it's the lady in the middle. So it just kind of grabs her. Hey. I'm not even awake, right? Nope. It grabs Durhood anyway. He uses milk around. Alright, they just start to look like they're dragging, trying to drag NPCs away. Lucky for you guys. All right, uh, Sergio, you are sickened. You're also still prone because you kind of crawled over there and got a sword. I'm sickened by this display of weakness. She turned you guys upside um, down. I've got to save people. Uh, since that uh, magical freaking sword is over, the I turned upside down. Okay. Yeah, because because <laughs> you because I'm prone. Because you're prone. Uh, well, I'm going to get up and run over and try to save uh, the NPC, the woman who's getting drug off, on the right-hand side. Okay. And uh, run up there and strike at this foul creature. Don't have enough actions. You just stand up and you can move, and that's it. I'll get over there, and, and then I'll start yelling at it. <laughs> hey, hey, you, let go of her, or hey. so help me. Durhood, you're still unconscious. Yay! This reminds me of other every other fight we've ever had. Are you just like a drunk? 
<laughs> no, he's the drunk. I'm the drunk. This is literal. All right, Tygon, uh, you can redirect your beer mug if you want to as a move action. Uh, I want to have it attack the one, the other one that's right next to it. Okay. So that person. I also want to stand up. Okay. Two move so actions. So he's attacking the other lobster. That hit. Very wow. success. All right. And I stand up. I can still move, right? Uh, no, you used your move action to redirect it. No, I didn't. I, it, I didn't redirect it. It, was, it didn't have to move. It, it did have attack. to move because it doesn't occupy a space. It was technically attacking this one, and then you told it to attack this one. But it can move twenty feet, regardless of my movement. I thought. You have to spend a move action to redirect it. Oh, okay. Otherwise, it's going to keep hacking that dead nope lobster. Okay. Um. Retsrum, oh boy, you come to your senses. Oh, can I actually see what's happening now? You, that'd, be, that'd be nice. You can see what is up. Um, Don't worry, I've already taken care of most of the problems. Uh, you are no longer unconscious, but you are sickened and groggy and treachery on the high seas is the first thing on your mind. <laughs> is is that a table or like just a towel? It's 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 just a pile of weapons. I tried to find a good image of piles of weapons, and that was the best thing I could find. Okay. Uh, well, I'm I'm just on my back, right? Yeah. These people with X's next to me are they dead or just unconscious? They are unconscious. They could be dead. You, it's kind of too uh, too crazy to know. You see Tygon up there doing magic, and you see Sergio about to strike a crab. Lobster. It's like a lobster in the back and crab in the front. Um, I'm sickened. Yeah, how do I do the thing? Do. There we go. Let's not do it. Uh, I'm sick. It means I just don't roll as high, right? Minus two on everything. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't doing that. Didn't matter. <laughs> nice. Uh. Oh, right, I didn't get my weapons. Oh, hey. Yeah. Jared, look, I got a Sahedra medallion from Gen Con. Oh, man. I'll never know what that does. Because <laughs> we never played anymore. You were the one that had it, too. You wore this thing. I know. Uh, um, I guess all I can do, I'll get up and go to my weapons and get mine if I get them one turn. You can do all that in a turn. Ooh, I, I like that I was twisting you when you moved, so it spun you as you moved. It was cool. Yeah. Cool, cool thing. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, yeah. The thing, the one that's still alive um, is going to drop this uh, lady that it's dragging out to sea, and it's going to you know, come up with this big defensive. <laughs> and it's going to do a bunch of claw attacks and a sting at uh, Sergio, who volunteered to engage. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a claw attack, uh, seven and twelve. And I'm wearing my armor. Uh, yeah, you're wearing you're wearing whatever you would have been wearing on the ship. Which armor? Yeah. Armor makes sense to be wearing on a boat in the open ocean. Thank well, you. it's only studded leather, so. Right. Uh, the sting, however, was a solid eighteen. Yeah, the bits. Okay, it doesn't hit you with any of the claws, but the claws were maybe a distraction to hit you with this big stinger. Yeah. Uh, you take uh, one point of damage. That's it. <laughs> but make a fourth save for poison. All right. Oh. Is the poison an illusion? <laughs> this whole thing is an illusion. So. I knew it. Right, you you are poisoned. Hello. Poisoned and sick. That can't be a good thing. Uh, you take one point of dex damage. So I'm down one dex. Okay. All right, uh, round four. Sergio, you're up. Well, I will strike mightily. And cleave the lobster in twain. 
Um, let's see, melee. Oh no, I probably missed. Uh, that's a miss. Mm -hmm. You guys are locked in a super battle. Uh, just in time for Durhood to finally wake up. Hey. Hey, Lamau. I was just looking up my spells. You don't have spells, you have powers. I was looking up my powers. Uh, so you come to probably the worst hangover feeling you've ever had. You are nauseous, you are groggy, everything is spinning. You do not recall how you got here. Cool. It is very early morning. Like, pre-dawn. Cool. Can I crawl over to my Urgosh? You can. Can I get it? You can. I'm gonna grab it. You do. All right, um, so you guys are all awake. Uh, you're dead. Tygon. I'm... Use my move action to redirect the spiritual weapon on the last dude. And have it go and attack the last dude. It does so. <laughs> what? What? That's a really crazy path to do it. Pretty but... awesome. Minus two? Uh, yeah. Ooh. Did that hit? Uh, no. But you still have a standard action. Uh. Well, let me check something. Everybody is within 30 feet of me. Just because I'm not sure how it's going to affect sickness or the unconscious people, I'm going to do one channel positive energy to heal. Uh, cool. It's 2d6. You're down a hit point. Sergio is down a hit point. Uh, but it does not seem to do anything with the sickness. Um, what if, about the you, poison? Yeah, the poison doesn't do anything about it either. When you um, when you're not in a combat situation, you can you may be able to try and figure out what it is that exactly that happened. Did it wake anybody else up? Didn't wake anybody else up. Okay. Uh, Worth Red's a from. shot. Worth a shot. Worth a shot. Uh, Rhett Sram. Restroom. Oh, sorry. Stop turning your mic off. We need, we, need to, <laughs> we gotta hear you constantly. You don't want me to leave my mic uh, on. Oh, Bones oh, is playing in the background. Or, so. or, oh, Bones. Oh, wait, yep, yep. What about the, the, the other two? Uh, I just deleted the tokens. I okay. killed them. The other two are dead. Um, well... Mm. Um, uh, the combat may seem like it's uh, under control. You you may want to grab those other two guys on the left before they, you know, float out to sea. Oh, is that a danger? It, it's not an immediate danger, but it is a, 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 a literal danger. It will probably happen eventually. Can't get to both. You can go in between the two of them. That's uh, 25. Ooh, you're slow, man. I'm slow. <laughs> Wearing all that plate mail in the ocean. Is that even what I'm wearing? Probably. I don't know. I just assume you're a, a, an iron slab of man. Not scale mail. Uh, we can see your face. You, you wear a full plate helmet on your scale mail. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll... Yeah, I imagine moving someone's a full action, so... It's, yeah, just... you just reposition them, so boom. Yep. Okay. Just... All right, dude, Lobster Man. He's going to keep fighting Sergio. All right, so two claws and a sting. Claws and an 11. And at an 18... Yeah, second one. Uh, it's, he's not big enough to, like, grapple you or anything with it, but he pinches you for one point of non-lethal damage. 
Okay. Down to 15. All right. I and, really shouldn't have used that spiritual weapon. And the sting uh, hits a 13. No. Okay. My armor class is above that. And, and round four. What about, uh, now, what about, is there any poison? Uh, yeah, now that you're up, you need to give me another fort save. Okay. Uh, you don't take any more poison damage. Okay. But you don't recover the damage you've already taken either. Uh, and you're up. Okay, well, I will slash at it again and just hack at it like the level 2 fighter I am. Just trying to find my melee. Here we go. Ooh. No. Okay. <laughs> Still. You're too not sick. my night. I just wail at it like I know what I'm doing. All right, Durhood. Distraction. I cast a uh, vigor on myself. Hmm? <laughs> With a PowerPoint. Hold on, I've been looking at my character sheet. Are there any more uglies? There's one ugly. Where'd he go? He's under the right. beer mug. Oh. Oh. The beer mug looks okay. super blurry, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, yes, blurry. Adam, because I'm a good character, he's not a rapier. As a good character, it is a warhammer. No, the the alignments override it if you don't have a patron deity. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. So they have a patron deity. It's the patron deity's weapon. Gotcha. Yeah. But whatever it is, doesn't matter. It does the same damage regardless. Yeah. You see, so you're gonna you're gonna stand up and run over there. Yes, mm-hmm. and then I make one attack. You don't have that action. Actually, you can't even move. You you manifested a power and then you stood up. That's all you got. Oh, just kidding. I need a card printed out. What can I do in one round? Move minor standard. Uh, Tygon. Um, well, I don't have to get my weapon a new order. It's gonna keep doing it. Yeah, you have your move action back. So it's gonna do another attack on the thing. Actually, no. Before it does, well, while it's doing its thing, uh, what's the distance there from me to that woman? It's exactly my speed. I move. Wrong button. I move and grab this person to keep them from falling off the shore. Okay. Cool beans. And my web, my spiritual weapon keeps attacking. Go for it. That is super blurry. Uh, 11 is going to miss it entirely. You don't even hit any bony hide or anything. What, in the 13 of it? <laughs> I won't say. Uh, okay, uh, Retzrum. All, your, all your, your passengers seem to be safe. You can tell that they're alive, but they are just squirming and like slowly coming to. They don't look like the you know adventurer fighter types like you guys are, so they're not quite as tough. Still their hands to help us fight and survive in the wilderness, which it looks like we'll have to do. And you're muted again. Oh, sorry. The six bones are so loud. Restroom. Is that guy not dead yet? Uh, no, he's been fighting Sergio for three rounds and holding his own. And okay. a spiritual weapon, and has been dodging the spiritual weapon as well. He's a hero crab. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine this is a bit in the ocean. Uh, you could Trump out there. He's only small size, so. Wait, wait Trump? Sir? No. Trump, not All Trump. Right. Splish, splish. Um, uh, I'm a hit. I'm a hit him. He's gonna try and sting you. He's got to reach with that stinger. Oh no! What did he? What? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, he got a ten with it. No. Nope. Get out of town. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Why isn't it? We can't hit each other. The eternal conflict. <laughs> oh, um, I'm gonna correct something you got wrong, Adam. No. 
I did less damage than you said I did plus my level. Yeah. For my damage. It's half your level. Not even that. Quarter your level. It's plus one for every three caster levels. Well, the first one was nine, so it still would have killed it. Um, no, the second one was ten, so it still yeah. would have killed it. Okay. Just want to be accurate. They're less. They're slightly less dead. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, you, you throw the dice at him. A twelve. Um, a twelve will not hit it. It you strike it in a in a big back bony plate. That that was my joke. Was that I did yeah. not hit it. Okay. Um, uh, it's turn. It doesn't like being surrounded by all you guys. It's just gonna withdraw and swim out into the ocean. Bye. <laughs> it's like nope, 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 and swim swims out of here. Sergio conquers again. Yay! Ow. Does it move more than twenty feet from my spiritual weapon? Um. Things. It double moves. Its swim speed is uh ambiguous. Because my spiritual weapon is going to keep chasing it until it, it moves eighty feet. My spiritual weapon is still going to try to chase it. Until <laughs> it can, it, can it go out eighty feet past you? Uh, I think it's sixty feet. Yeah, you're 100, 100 plus 10 feet per level. Well, okay, so you'll get at least one more attack on it. You won't know if it wins or not. Go ahead and roll dice. Go ahead and roll it? Yeah. It only moves 20 feet per round, though, so it probably can outrun it. Oh, if it only it's moving 80 feet this one round, so you won't ever connect to it. Yeah. It follows so, it automatically until it, it moves faster than it can keep up. Yeah, and then it just disappears. Yeah, so that he's gonna go live and tell about the amazing heroes that have shown up on Crab Island. Uh, speaking um, speaking of Crab Island, we'll say combat is over now. I want to before everyone comes to. I want to pull the two of the crap, the two other lobster corpses, and throw them on the beach as well. Okay. Just because maybe there's some good meat on them. I don't know. Maybe who knows? I don't know where the fuck we are. And then I want to look over the people that are still unconscious. See. If I recognize any of them from the boat. Is it yeah, the these are all passengers that you were familiar with on the boat. But not like the cook or the captain? Mm, none of the crew members are here. These are specifically all passengers. Um, is it all of the passengers? No, there is one passenger missing. Who? Treason on the high seas. Okay. Um, Girlfriend. Dumped is that their name? Uh, it was a lady, yeah. Um... Uh, right. Uh, I want to slowly wowse everyone up. Can I do medicine checks on everyone to see if I can't heal the sickness? Yeah, give me give me heal checks. Medicine, man, we should be playing 5th edition. <laughs> medicine checks. Right. Uh, I'm looking for heal. Let's do it. 16, where's your medicine? Yeah. Um, you confirm that you guys have all been poisoned. Am I able to do anything about it? Um, well, the poison's already run its course. Uh, you figure that that's why you do not have any memories of what happened and how you got on this beach. Um, My you're... poison hasn't run its course. Yeah, th that's a different poison. He's double poisoned. <clears throat> Uh, and you figure that the worst of it's already passed. You've been unconscious for several hours because you remember, um, you remember uh, like having another big uh, meal, hanging out with the cook who you watched didn't poison anything. You were probably hanging out with him, um, but the uh, the sickness is you know you're getting better. You're waking up. It's you you may retch and vomit a little bit, but you're getting you're getting better. Uh, someone give me a survival check. Also plus there. Let me find it. Tygon is skill monkeying everything. <laughs> yeah. Unless this is a, to avoid becoming lost, then I got a plus two as well. Nope. Um, oh, there it is. You find uh, the beach. The so there. when you woke up, Tygon, you were the first one to wake up, but you saw everybody was lined up in this very neat row. Um, 
there are footprints other than what you guys made during this fight that are leading back and forth from the water and a fair number of little grooves in the sand uh, that were made by probably a small boat. Um, and it looks like all these bodies were dragged up from the water. Uh, and the amount of boat grooves, someone made this trip several times. <gasps> so the, the crew had to have been in on this. To let this happen. So um, what's all the red X's? I'm sorry. Is the are they dead? Unconscious. Those are the unconscious passengers, which are slowly uh, rousing. Reconscioning. You know, they need they need a couple of minutes. You guys only needed a couple of rounds. Okay. What I don't understand though is if they double crossed us treachery on the high seas, why aren't we dead? That's right. I start um, as they're waking up. I'm I'm doing the cleric thing of taking care of them and trying to care for them and make sure everyone's okay. And, uh, everybody uh, is we'll in okay. just as much of a shock about things as you guys are. Um. Um, you notice, um, you know, now that you're interacting with these people, this guy, uh, you know, the black guy, uh, you had never seen him before on the ship, uh, but he is chained up. He has manacles on. Uh oh. I ask, I ask every, I, the people, do I know all these people's names? Uh, you probably do. And if you don't, I'm going to line them up and we will give you guys some, uh, names. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so from left to right, there is a lady. I think I have better pictures of all these people. Um, there is a lady named Sasha. Cool. Um, she has she has no legs. She has no legs. She also has in for nope lobster on nope. her back. Yeah. <laughs> mm. mm. uh, there is a. TN. It looks like, looks like uh, wings from the fly, that movie. The next guy is an yeah. older Tian man named Ishiru. Uh, next is a Verizian woman who's all dressed out like a, like a cool navy guy named Eris. But not the cool Final Fantasy heiress. She's a half elf. Yeah. And a halfling who's got uh, like very garish nobleman outfit, out, uh, like nobleman's outfit on. He's very, very uh, pompous in his appearance. Uh, named Gaelic. Michelangelo. Leonardo. I was thinking Tygon before he got his nose cut off. But All right, I and the guy that's chained up is a Gurundi man. Um, you don't know his name. Since he's the only person that don't know his name, I ask him his name and ask him why he's chained up. He says, and I use as much diplomacy as possible in doing it. So. Okay, uh, hold on a second. Uh, he introduces himself as uh, Jask. And why are you chained up, Jask? Um, my diplomacy check for why he's on my question there. Um, he doesn't look like he is in a in a state to be speaking right now. He's just kind of barfy. Um, so let me give you guys some more some more things that are going on here. Um, <clears throat> um, all right. Um, some some more super immediate relevant information. Uh, if you look out on the ocean, you can see your boat out there smashed up against some rocks. Uh oh. Uh, there is a big chunk of it missing. And, um, but the rest of it is just kind of slowly being beaten up against the cliff wall. Oh. Mm. Um, uh, um, it does. That, is what? Is that giant, uh, hurricane, typhoon, dealy, visible at all? Uh, no. 
Not at all. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty chill looking weather. Uh, you know the sun's coming up. You're gonna have a nice tropical beach vacation. All right. Mm. Um, so immediately asking why this guy's chained up. Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, and I also want to look through the weapons and see if there's any le weapons left unclaimed. Yeah, the 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 other people uh, start to collect uh, what. They appear to be their goods. Yeah. Uh, but this guy, he's a middle-aged guy. Um, his hair's starting to gray. Um, he's got, like, tears in his eyes. Um, oh. Fitbit's telling me to go to bed. Um, Uh, but this guy, he, he looks at you with kind of a, like a, you know, fierce looking glare. Um, Who, Jast? Yeah, Jast does. Um, and he says that he was betrayed and he's being turned over to the Sargavan government. I was framed. Framed for what? For conspiracy. Conspiracy against who? Against, against my, 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 my people, my government, being brought to Sargava for trial. Well, we're all castaways now. And so. It looks like Nethus has smiled upon me and given a given me a chance to prove my innocence. Nethus. Don't think it matters right now. Right now, we just gotta stay alive. The the god he mentioned, Nethys. Do I know anything about that god? Knowledge, religion, DC ten. Everybody can do it. Uh, I have knowledge, religion at plus four. So. Whoa, Durhood, critical. <laughs> wow. Nethys and Tygon the cleric. He's like, I don't know other gods. <laughs> Uh, Nethys is the patron god of magic, and he is represented by a man with two faces. One is horribly burned and disfigured, and the other is, uh, is beautiful and attractive. He is a two-faced god, uh, two -faced. Rep representing the duality of magic as both a creative and destructive force. Cool. Uh, he is a neutral deity. In this case, Nethys was creatively destructive. <laughs> he, whenever Nethys closes a door, he opens a window. <laughs> Uh, would I know if the lobsters we killed are edible? Uh, give me a survival check. I need a lobster. Uh, very little. Yeah, it's it's poisonous. That's another problem. Most lobsters aren't poisonous. These are so. Durhood could probably you know make it happen. What with her amazing survival skills. Uh -huh. um, the rest of the island behind you is this vast tropical jungle expanse uh tygon you have a wayfinder so you know that you were on the north side of a beach north is ocean yeah uh you don't know how big this island is um exploring it is going to be a major uh, thing to do or we can try to go back and see what's on the boat yeah going back on the boat you don't have any supplies whatsoever the only supplies you have are what you can carry on your person which for you guys is not a lot of your gear, like your ropes and things, that stuff that you wouldn't be carrying on you, it would just be in a trunk. That stuff's not here. So I don't have my scrolls or my potions. Or... You probably have your potions. You probably don't have, uh, for example, you probably don't have um, your alchemist fires and you don't have your holy water. But you've, yeah, wow. I mean. I brought that rope up. <laughs> I wore that around my belt at my all scrolls. times. I have my scrolls. Uh, your scrolls you probably have on you as well. Because you never know when combat's going to break out. Do you guys want to check these trails on the beach and see if they looted the boat already? You guys, it, I'm going to go use the rest. I'm going to wander off to us. Well, it rock. looks, the, 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 the boat is off on a cliff. It looks like you could, cl like, walk up the cliff and climb down onto the boat. Or you could try to swim out there. Yeah, but you said there were tracks. On the beach. Those were for from somebody dragging you out of the water. Gotcha. It looks like someone 
made multiple trips on a boat, a very small boat, and dumped everybody on the beach. So somebody rescued you. None of these guys admit to being the one that did it. Um, and, and the boat is still here? The little rowboat? That... The little rowboat's gone. Okay. There's no sign of who or what. So I saved this and then left. Yeah. Well, we could try to... I wouldn't mind climbing down to the boat and see if there's anything to scavenge. Yeah, I mean, because... It looks like we're on our own. Uh, these other guys are... They are not particularly the adventuresome type. And they may have you know, certain skills and things you can rely on, but they are way less okay with what's going on. Um, when Sasha comes to, she kind of has just been like constantly like screaming. Um, uh, Sasha? She, yeah, Sasha has just been like just a, like a very like uh, regular, just, <sighs> just, just trying to let out all this stress and energy. I, I come up to Sasha. Offer her some ale and try to comfort her. And tell her that Kid and Colleen is here. And... Uh, give me a sense motive check. Just a general yeah. sense motive check for all these guys. Because if that doesn't work, I'm about to wrestle her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Ishiru is just kind of like staring off on into the sea on his knees. Wow. Um, whoa. Yeah, Tygon's already trying to be friendly, super friendly with her. Um, but you figure that these guys are, are, they're in shock. They just need a little bit of time to digest what's happening. You guys are ready, like, let's go check out what's in the boat. They are not, they, they are like... There's... Do I still have all my armor on? You still have your armor on. So I, I'm going to keep trying to comfort Sasha and give her some ale. But yeah, they, they maybe by the time you get back from the boat, you'd be like, we're going to check the boat. Maybe there's more survivors. Maybe there's a sign of what happened. Did we find a boat to get to the boat? No, you don't. But you could walk there and climb down a cliff to get to it. Okay. It's 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 northwest of where you are. Maybe um, we should all walk together. So we're all split up. Yeah, those lobster bees could come back any minute. Yeah, can you Maybe guys the you know, that we can just walk? Um, the uh, the half elf lady Eris. Um, she has a. Um, She's got, um, uh, a, you know, a big, a big composite longbow, and she draws it and gets it ready. And she's just like, "I'll make sure they never get close to us." Great. That's the spirit. Watch our back as we all walk together as a group to the boat. Because staying together is the same thing. Nah, none of these guys look like they're fit to travel, especially climbing down a cliff. You don't. Yeah, exactly. Spirit. I don't um, mean that. I just mean not. Oh, you guys. Yeah, you guys. Yeah. Not just for uh, yourself either. How hard, like, how steep is this cliff? Um, it's pretty rough looking. Uh, out of combat, you don't think it's going to be trouble. If you have to fight anything on a cliffside, <laughs> no, no. I, I'd say that we all should walk to the cliff together. They should wait atop the cliff while we climb down and investigate. And we should all go to the cliff together. Okay, um, give me a diplomacy check. I'm helping. Yeah, yeah you just like, grip on your Urgash, you like, we should stick together. Going over there. Any, anybody else want to try? All right. Charisma negative one. <laughs> Diplomacy. I'm going to diplomatize them by smacking them all across the face and say, hey, get it together. And that worked horribly, so never mind. See, me and Sergio are helping. Uh, I just it, made it worse. <laughs> Eris says, we, we have a good vantage point from where we are. We'll keep an eye on you from here. Oh, Smart, tactical. Okay, I can live with that. I'm. I'm but I she's totally... mostly like she's mostly keeping an eye on Sasha, who does who is just like pretty inconsolable at this point. Um, Gellick is kind of just chuckling to himself. He's on the like, the crazy edge of things. Um, but Ishiru and Zat and Jask are both 
uh, relatively quiet and reserved, uh, taking kind of taking everything in. Uh, Jask does have this very um, slight look of happiness because you know he was a prisoner on his way to transport, and that may not be happening anymore. I, I turn to Jask before we head off. Jask. What? You like prove your innocence to me and join us. Uh, what good can With I what? do? Yeah, he holds up his manacled hands. I don't know. What good can you do? Do you have any skills that might be helpful? Uh, they. Uh, I would need my hands to be of any use. Well, maybe if you tell me what skills you have, I might find a way to loosen your hands. Can I try to break his manacles with a rock or something, or with you my ergot? Can. Ooh, with an ergot, that seems sketchy. It has <laughs> a pointy. I got, I got a big old hammer. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he has hands that he is very important to him. It has a pointy end. He says, uh, give, give me a diplomacy check on Jask here. Um... He says that um, if you can't get these manacles off, there's little help I can offer, especially since I'm deprived my uh, holy symbol, which was how locked. wide can he? No, not at all. They're just—it's like not even a chain. It's just like keep. It's like two clasps um, that a chain could go on. Like it's the kind where you just drag somebody around. Um, he says if you can get uh, the the. If you can get these manacles off, and you can get me my holy symbol back, and scrounge up some spell components, I can. I'll do what I can. Holy symbol? Are you a cleric? I am. I'm stuck here because I'm a cleric, and I want to help a fellow cleric. All right. Um, do I have like extra spell components? You got enough to make let them get by at least for a little while. Um, eventually, that could become a problem if you aren't able to, um, uh, you know, restock. Is there anywhere that your holy symbol might be? On the ship, that all my personal belongings, which he in points, your quarters or in the main? Probably in the captain's quarters. What am I, I to check it out? Room? Can you assist, or did you like to stay here with the others? Uh, if we're not all going, I'm not going. I'm, someone should keep us safe. He's got a big, he's got a big katana because he's a weeaboo. Okay, I, I leave I leave them all behind and I start walking towards the cliff. No, weeaboo. He's actually Asian. he is actually Asian, so from Asia. I I, I kind of walk up the issue very quickly and says, "You I trust. I'm not too sure of this jazz fellow." <laughs> he gives you a big. Uh, Big, a big toothy smile, but he's an older guy, so he doesn't have a lot of teeth. That's not and racist. I, he's I just trust, older. And I trust him to like kind of watch the area, and I start walking towards the cliff. Take okay. Care. Uh, scrolling up here. Okay. Um. So you can walk along the beach and kind of up the slope that becomes this cliff that the uh, ship is uh, bunked on, or just kind of crashing against. Uh, you can tell just looking at it that this thing is never going to get on the ocean again. Um, if, it, if it weren't just kind of like perched precariously on this rock near the side of the cliff, it would have you know fallen into the ocean. Um, but the back end of the ship is precariously hanging on there, and it is wedged between the cliff and the rocks, but it is like listing, like dangerously so. So you figure that like this thing's only going to stay here for a couple more hours, maybe if that. Especially when the tide comes in or goes out, whichever. To it'll you know move it. Yeah. Just have to go and see what we can scavenge. And it is still early morning. And get as much shit as we can, over encumber ourselves if need be. Get as much shit as we can. Mostly personal effects that we're missing, and. Extra um, stuff that might be of the other people's and anybody a lot. This is looking like something of a dangerous climb to get down. Um, and you're looking at 150 feet that need to be traversed.
Right. Okay. And none of us have a rope? No, you guys... Did, uh, Retsrum and, and Sergio both have ropes. Pretty good at climbing. Yeah, so... I, uh, I, you're, I, it's, I it's pretty much a jungle behind you, so there's lots of trees and rocks and things you could tie this rope to. Um, between the two of you, you have 100 feet of rope. Um, you're probably going to lose maybe a quarter of that tying it over something. No. Um, so you've got a rope down a hundred of the 150 feet. So what part of the 50 feet is the most dangerous? The bottom part where the water hits it. So I would climb down 50, then tie the rope off if possible. Well, at that point you can't because you're on the side of the cliff. You'd have to tie it to a tree or something. The part where you fall off is the dangerous part. But I do have, yeah, that's true. But I do have a grappling hook. Is it possible to take that or some pitons or something? Yes, you could do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I need to do, and it's going to be very dangerous, and if somebody can do it better, they can do it. Is, is anyone... Climb down 50 feet, take the two ropes and put the pitons in or whatever, if somebody has something. And then uh, climb down 100 feet with rope and then just start, I don't know, hauling stuff up. But... Me going down and up over and over again is going to be very tiring. What's well, up? Uh, I'm wondering. I'm trying to figure out, like, who goes down, who stays up. Because I can't really carry shit and I climb negative three. Uh, I can carry a lot. Uh, is I have there... a fairly good climb as well and I carry a lot. So is I'll there, say, oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is there a place that we can throw effects to? Like, is there a beach beside it? Is there anything, anywhere where we can go once we're down? There's rocks and stuff you could use. Yeah, you could, I mean, you're going to be being smashed by waves and stuff all the time, but there's basically not a safe place down there. Uh, you may be able to find... I could, um, like, to get on the ship, get what I need, jump in the ocean, and swim back to the, the, the sandy beach. Um... That's a pretty big swim. Okay, never mind. It, 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 it is possible. Don't ask me to lift any barrels up the cliff, but I can carry, you know, like you say, personal effects. Did uh, you say we have three people? They have good climbs? I do. I have terrible climb. Does anyone have... What's, what's everybody's climb bonuses? Tygon's at minus three. I'm at four. I'm at three plus three. Um, I was just thinking because my no. swim is so good, I could form a good daisy chain person if we wanted to like fire, fire a bucket. It. My swim's alright too. R Rister, what's, yeah. your, what's your my climb? Uh, my my climb and swim are both seven. If I think of my armor. Okay. Um, well, Rister, you can tell looking at this cliff that it, were you unencumbered, you could you could handle this. This cliff is not too dangerous for you. You you could take ten and make it. Um, everybody else, you guys are on the edge of maybe, maybe not. You're figuring between the two of you looking at it, you're hitting a DC 15 climb. I, I'm, I'm staying up at the top. I can't make this climb. I will guard where we want to tie up the rope. Hmm. I don't mind going on the boat. I can make the trip and hand the items back. Yeah, I think and maybe. if you, you basically, uh, Tygon and Sergio have like a 45% chance of succeeding on the climb. And that's without uh, that's without a rope, that's without any assistance. Even if we take 10? If you take 10, you won't succeed because it's a DC 15. You, you figured that just by you looking at it and thinking it's too hard, and Red's from looking at it and thinking he's got this. Actually, if we're, I'm still 14, it's kind of funny. So <laughs> I don't know. It looks pretty dangerous. We might just have to go with, you know, with that. You, you what's, could, what's on the ship that we need? I mean, um, I'm, I'm going to go. We don't even know. Someone might have looted it. It might be completely empty. It might yeah. be. I mean, y'all might get down there and find there's still a life post that you can throw a shit ton of stuff on and go back to shore. We can I, both, right? Come up top. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to take my armor and start climbing down. Like, I don't, I don't know what all the hesitation is. Just, I'm going <laughs> to climb. Go. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can, let Redstorm, Redstorm is co uh, capable and comfortable. He can go down there and scout. All right, I'll take He's gonna make up for all the adventuring you didn't get to do in the in the beach fight. That's right, that's right. And I stay up top and hope you find the boat with a bunch of shit. And... Tell you what, 
I'm gonna stay up top too, but if you get yeah, if you, can, trouble, if you can't make this, then yeah, stay up there. I don't want you falling to your death. Yeah. yeah. No. However, if you get into trouble and you fall to your near death, then I'm gonna come get you. But other than that, uh, well, I mean, eh, I imagine at least one of you has a bow and arrow or something. Also, I'm wily. <laughs> I'm spry. I'm scrappy. I'll get out. <laughs> yeah, I got a bow and arrow. Okay. All right. So you climb down. Um, just remember you're uh, you're unarmored, which. Who cares? You're you're made out of hit points, right? Yeah, I, I only I rolled it a whole three last time. <laughs> you beat you beat Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I rolled a one for my level two hit points. That <laughs> sucks. All right, um, so you climbed down there. Um, I don't have a really good map for this or anything. Uh, the front of the ship is gone. There's only the back end of it, which fortunately does have the captain's quarters, as well as the kitchen and the passage to, like, the below decks, which you guys didn't really deal with because that was most of the crew quarters. Um, and is... Uh, uh, I'm not too familiar with ship uh, layouts, but there, there's, like, a... a the captain's quarters type dealy that's like on top of the ship like a eh. um give me give me a perception check <coughs> no whoops first one first one yeah it didn't make, it didn't make a noise hey um so when once you get real close to the boat you can tell that most of the bottom deck is gone it's just like a big gash in it um you can get into the captain's cabin you can get into the mid deck area and the larder and the supply room. And uh, you didn't realize it, but this ship has a brig uh, and a galley. <coughs> uh, but you, as, also, as you poke around, you don't see any lifeboat. You know that the Genevieve only had one lifeboat. You don't see it anywhere. Um, All right. When you, you look over the edge of the ocean, or the edge of it, and you can see that. <laughs> the edge of the ocean. The I edge found of the ocean. it. The end of the world. <laughs> the end of the world. Um, you see that the lifeboat is, uh, there's a piece of it lolling about attached to a thick rope, uh, like someone had, uh, moored the lifeboat to the main ship. So there's a piece of boat that's still attached to the ship, just kind of flopping about. So the lifeboat's ruined. All right. Oh no. That's unfortunate. Uh... Well, I'll... The captain's quarters would be, like, the first thing that's most accessible, right? Uh, yeah, I and mean, you can move... This is, It's a small boat. I mean, it's a galleon, but I looked up how big galleons are, and they're actually no. not, not as big as I thought they were. Yeah. Um, so you can get to anywhere pretty easily. Uh, okay. you, start, you start going, you know, into the bowels of the ship. Give me another perception check. There is something. Uh, no, you said, you said twenty-one. I rolled before. <laughs> no, no, ten is enough because something is making a, a, a loud racket down in the deck in the deck of the okay. ship. There is a clattering noise. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll have my weapons out at least. Okay, you draw your weapon. Um, you uh, you can go down into the deck, and you see another one of those giant lobster lobster monsters. Uh, is scratching and scrabbling at this door with a pool of like blood coming out of the bottom of it. Oh. Uh, give me a stealth check. <laughs> oh, I'm not armored. Maybe it won't be completely abysmal. That's really bad. They aren't that hard to kill. Uh, plus two. So two of them. Alright, this is, this is Marster getting his own experience points. I got an eight. You got an eight. Okay. Um, it, I imagine not quite. Yeah. When, enough. when you come down, it uh, senses that you've entered the room, and it gives up the uh, trying to get through the door, and it charges at you. So we're gonna have uh -oh. a, we're gonna have a no a no uh, movement fight. A, no movement initiative. Put the tabletop game yeah. version of the card game one. Theater of the mind. <laughs> Roll initiative at me. Oh, I, <laughs> nope. Rolls for initiative. <laughs> uh, what is it? Plus three? Yeah. I got an 18. 
right, um, all right, you're gonna go first. This thing is substantially bigger than the other ones. The others were small size. This one's medium sized. Oh. Hmm. But you can move up to it and hit it if you want to. We, we That's don't... dangerous. Wait, yeah. Crab battle. I swear. Oh, you missed. It's gonna kill you to death. Oh no. <laughs> right now, the Final Fantasy VII battle music is going on, and it's like a boss fight. Uh, I got Kirby's Fine. epic Do I have yarn to come down music. There? I got a. Uh... All right, it's gonna full attack you. So good luck. Two claws and a sting. First claw is a nineteen. Oh no! Actually, I'm dead. Shit. Nope. Ow. What? Uh, so three damage. I'm pretty sure I just died. <laughs> three damage. Uh, this it's still not big enough to grapple you. It's you know medium sized, so it just kind of pinches you hard. Uh, second claw is three to hit, and the stinger is a three to hit also. So you got That's nipped. You got a little bit of nippiness, but okay. uh, you survived. Please kill it so I don't end you. How much damage? My, oh yeah, you do that in the thing. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any special full attack things. I'm only level two, right? Crab battle. Is this in view of us on the on the? Uh... No, he's in the ship at this point. All right. Wait, All right. mine is. Oh, wait a minute. Because my ah, there it is. Uh. Uh. Nice. How about now? That's a hit. That's that's a hit we believe in. <gasps> that is exactly enough to disable it. Yay! Oh, yay! <laughs> I didn't die. Hooray! Yay, not dying. Um, it is going to, like, total defense, because you've got it backed against a wall. It can't go anywhere. So it's oh, not no. going to attack you. It's going to make you do the dirty work of finishing it off. <laughs> so it does. Uh, it does a total defense action. Well, I mean, I I, I do want this thing to be dead. <laughs> oh, but total defense is gonna miss. Uh, you're just gonna have to roll d20s until until. You um, hit. Oh, for real, actually, we can do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just just so you feel extra bad about killing this uh <laughs> this disabled <laughs> crab. <laughs> right, uh, you're a crab master. Okay. All right, you kill it and um. You can go to any of these rooms that you're interested in heading into. The one it wanted to get into. The one it wanted to get into? Yeah. Okay, uh, that's going to go into one of the storerooms. Um, scroll, 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 scroll. Sorry, I got, I got lost in my, my pit of... Okay, um, the storeroom has, uh, it doesn't have a lot of supplies, but you, inside it is a body of one of the crew members. He's the first mate, uh, mm. named Alton Devers. Um, his blood is what's trickling under the roof, under the door to the supply room. Um, and, uh... The door is stuck. You have to break it open. You do. Um, but this guy is slumped against the wall. He is very quite dead. Um, he's got what looks to be some kind of distinct wounds on him. Uh, give me a heal check. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Clutch heal! <laughs> since, since you are a master of fighting, uh, you can tell that he has a set of wounds that were probably made by a rapier, as well as some stings from one of these creatures. Tigon. Betrayal. Um, <laughs> and the rapier didn't kill him, but it was the poison that did. I don't poison my rapier. Yeah. Uh, he's also he's wearing. People up for crab he's, he's, he's got functional masterwork studded leather armor and a functional masterwork short sword. I mean, yeah, I'm, anything of value that is on him. Um, uh, there is lots of stuff in here that could come in handy. 
Uh, you may not want to get any of it now, but you could acknowledge it's here and keep exploring. Um, there well, is... I mean, uh, mm, you're right. I don't, I don't, I don't have my backpack. I guess. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of fishing nets in here. There's like a block and tackle, a bunch of bunch of spare sheets of canvas, uh, grappling hooks, lanterns and lantern oil, a lot more rope too. Uh, like 150 feet of rope in a big bundle. It's How? a big single bundle. How high up could I throw that? Is it within 50 feet? Am I Superman? <laughs> well, it's long enough to cover the entire depth distance of the cliff. So you could grab that spool of rope and climb all the way up and lower it down. And then everyone can get down there. You can yeah. do that now or you can keep exploring this place on your own. That's, yeah, I'd, I'd like I'd like to just go ahead and get that done. Do the, do the exploring? Do the rope thing, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, just get- yeah, you, you, everyone, you see uh, Restroom come back onto the dip. He's got a big spool of rope, and he's holding it over his head like Link. <laughs> um, and after, you know, several, probably about an hour's worth of time, he can climb up, and you guys have plenty of rope to all get down there. Sorry, with and, with and your and arms and armor. We can all take- um, down there, no problem. Yeah, it's you. You've got a wall to brace against, so it's it's like a DC five to get down that. Okay, I go down. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna leave my armor off, actually, <laughs> just for. I'll bring I, it with me but it's for swimming off, purposes. Yeah, I I say fully armored, fully fully everything, and I take anything I need to. I start going through all the room. Okay. Oh wait, so what's the what's the penalty for studded mail? Mail is it only minus two? I don't know. Mm. Um. So other rooms, uh, you can check the larder. Uh, which is where the food stores were kept. Um, there's... I want to look for personal effects in here. Yeah. Um, you find uh, another body, which is your cool muscle cook. And he also has strange uh, wounds on him, which will call for another heal check. Uh oh. I'll take care of that. Tygon, these look like snake bites on his neck and shoulders from, like, a huge snake. I mean, the only thing that's going to kill a giant muscle wizard are giant snakes, right? Muscle wizard. I that one. Muscle wizard. That's a transmutation wizard that cast fist. Uh, but this guy was a cook. He was just the one that worked out all the time. Um, as far as food goes, because that seems critical for survival... Um, there is enough food to last probably a single person about a month. Oh, uh, no. But we have... There's eight of us? Nine of us, I think? Oh, nine, maybe. Yeah. Eight plus one. Yeah, nine. Eight plus a prisoner. Um, so that could be a problem. Um, you You're guys don't have to worry about water because uh, Tygon can just magically make water come out of the ether. But he can't do that with food yet. Can I eventually? Eventually you can. It's like a fourth level cleric spell. Um, all right, check another rooms out. Um, the below decks is mostly gone and flooded. Uh, there are some of the crew members' bodies floating in there, obviously drowned. Uh, do we? Can, I want to take a chance to look through the the uh, prison and see if I can find Jas's holy symbol. Um, you don't find any of that. Most of it's floated out into the ocean. It could be lost, or it could be in the captain's quarters. Uh, let's yes. check there. That seems like a cool place to go next. Yep. yep. Um. The cat, it's a wreck. There's a big hole in the side of it, and most of the room has spilled out into the sea. Um, but there's some pretty useful stuff in here. Um, there is a big desk that uh, fell over and got sucked to the wall and is mostly blocking the rest of the room from getting out. So what useful things are still in here is due to this big writing desk that's slammed up against the wall. Um the desk has in a drawer a key ring with, with several different keys in it. And another drawer has several sea charts and maps, as well as a written captain's log with no star date. 
um, which we will discuss that in a bit because you guys are looking for more treasure stuff here too. Um, but there's, yeah, there's there's lots of nautical charts and maps and things which you may be able to use to piece together where you are. Um, the lower desk drawer is locked. I want to use the key from the keyword and try to open it. That's smart. It works. <laughs> Dad? Uh, there is some very fine brandy. And a... I take that, put it away. My own back, hoping no one sees me do it. There is a very nice box, which if you open it up, has a ship in a bottle. And it's a nice model of the Genevieve. Um, and there's also a little box that has loose coinage in it. But no holy symbol. Uh, not yet. Uh, and the desk is a long leather satchel that kind of folds out and it looks like a like a uh, apothecary's kind of deal. It has dozens of potions in it and all kinds of healing kits and things. Um, and it might be useful. There is a big footlocker in here which has a bunch of gear in it, a masterwork dagger and some leather armor, some more potions, and a holy symbol of Nephis as well as spell components. I take all that shit. Yeah, and there's all these unidentified potions that you can take as well. All the potions I put in my own Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they put never in the other stuff I never found. It. I'm the potion master. Yeah. Right, uh, but you can get all those valuables. Um, we can, and we'll, and you can get all the, um, do you want to deal with the, the, the supplies and stuff in here? The canvas and the, the lamps yeah. and the lantern oil. We're going to grab everything. I'm grabbing as much as I can possibly carry, even if I'm going to bring comfort. Right. Okay, um, climb up, I'm grabbing it. Yeah, you guys probably take the next three or four hours to completely empty this ship out as it slowly starts to slide into the sea. Yes. Um, you Every now and then you look out onto the beach to see your people and wave at them, and they just kind of, you know. But, <laughs> um, so, yeah, you get everything out. All awesome. Right. Do we find the holy symbol? You did find his holy symbol. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, and you found some keys that maybe work on its manacles. Um, sure. The You guys want to examine the ship log? Yes. Before we head back to the beach. I want yeah. To yeah. Okay. Um, the beginning of it is, uh, it, you know, he, he makes a, a new log um, every time... Basically, he completes a round trip. So this log begins with his ship setting off from Riddleport. Um, everything is mundane for the first, you know, two thirds of the trip until you start getting south or after you guys have been picked up. Um, there are missing entries. You know, he had been recording regular day daily logs, even if it's just like nothing to report. Uh, you know, he's also recording. Uh, the food usage and stuff like that. Excuse me, very mundane things. Um, but it starts to get more and more missing and less common. Um, missing details, forgetting to talk about food and things, several missing entries. And the ones that are there are super short. And he is speaking, uh, he seems to have developed a crush on one of the passengers, uh, very specifically someone named uh, Iana, who is not one of your people on the beach. Uh, you did. You do recall her being on the boat. She was a Verizian, like maybe wizard-looking lady, a scholar of some sort, a, a book nerd, um, who was not super friendly and mostly kept to herself. Um, but the captain. I mean, she was super pretty, and the captain seems to have, you know, doodled some some together forevers in the captain's log here. Yeah. Uh, eventually, the entries start to become just love poems. Hmm. And, Watch out for those rocks! And then uh, some of them are like super uh, R9K depressive spiels about how he hasn't or she hasn't noticed him yet. He's gone full emo. Um, Did he say who he's talking about? Never go full fortune. He's he's talking for to uh, about this uh, passenger he's trying to woo. Uh, near the end of it, he starts to complain that some of the other crew members are trying to make moves on his girl. 
and he Captain ha- nice guy. Yeah, the captain has a suspicion that his first mate is uh, secretly having an affair with her, and how he wishes that he would just have an accident. Uh oh. Somebody paid Tygon off. The final entry of the <laughs> journal is that he has changed course for something called Smuggler Shiv at Ayana's request. And he it says that he hopes that the two of them can make a home on the island. But the crew doesn't seem to like this course of action. And that maybe something maybe need may need something may need to be done about the crew. Wonder if the cat was being played. Or oh, I mentioned like sort of sorcery, making her. Maybe she was just really pretty. If what? No, it was. It was she sorry, was like, pretty. I mean, you, you, the, the captain having a crush on her is not beyond your belief. Getting that crazy about getting it. Getting crazy about her is you know in a world of magic and dragons. Maybe yeah. she just has that magic pussy. Don't <laughs> know. The power of love. Could could be. We wouldn't <laughs> discount it. But now you guys have an adventure hook, and it's ten o'clock. So um. Uh, you have a bunch of sea charts. You have a place called Smuggler Shiv, which uh, we can do a knowledge check now if you want to. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Knowledge geography? Uh, yeah. Hold on, I got a big list of things that can be knowledged. Um, Arcana, oh. and Brewer. Let's see here. Uh, geography, profession, sailor, geography, history, or local. So just straight D20 then. <laughs> knowledge local four, knowledge history ten, knowledge local three. I know nothing about geography. I just I know nothing about anything, but I'm I about shit. Just natural funny. All right. Well, yes, yeah, sm- Smuggler Shiv is a very notorious island, which is north of Eladar. So you should be relatively close to where you are going. Um, it's small enough to be not shown on most maps uh, because it can very, very safely be avoided. Uh, but people that are in Desperation Bay sailing around give it a long, wide berth because it is named after its knife-like coastline and its very uncanny habit of wrecking ships. Um, mostly smugglers that go near it to avoid detection by Sargava's navy. But you don't know anything else, uh, else about it except for that reputation of its shipwreck island. Oh, lovely! Is that where we are currently? Yep. We assume that's where we are. So we're on an I'm island. Just, I'm going to get our way off the island. So that's more fun than um. The lost intro credit play. Hold on, I'm make, I'm finding it right now. <laughs> Oh, well, then I couldn't have died on the ship because I was already dead the whole time. Uh, sh- <laughs> that is yet to be confirmed yet. So well, I go is... back to the beach and I give Jask back his holy symbol. We will start doing that next time because we're going to deal with those people a little bit more more critically at the next session. All so, right. three months from now, uh, I'm gonna, that's my first action. Remember that. <laughs> Get this cleric back on the ropes. This convicted criminal. There was a convicted criminal. You can't run from everything. Hmm. Or no, you no, can't no, run. Wanna, you can't run I forever. GG. GG. Can I tell what level he is, cleric wise? Hmm. You, you're gonna have him. You're gonna pull out your questionnaire of cast cure light wounds, cast cure moderate wounds, cast cure critical <laughs> wounds. I don't know. If, 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 I don't know how this works. That's I'm that is imagine. level level and hit die are not something that can be communicated. Well, I can, like, tell if he's, like, like super strong, like, he can take, like, a shit ton of hits or anything. Yeah, uh-huh. you could you could see his relative uh, hit points. Uh, you could, if he ever casts a spell that you know is a second or third level spell, that confirms things, too. Dead. But anyway, uh, does this adventure seem exciting? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually really interested. Okay. I'm, I'm really interested. Yeah, I like it, definitely. I'm, my interest is peaked. Yeah, I'm kind of like, don't want to stop right now. <laughs> All right, uh, another last minute preview of things to come is um, 
getting off the island is probably a priority, but establishing uh, survival, because you've got supplies for a couple of days, uh, you need to build some kind of base camp. Uh, you need to maybe try and figure out a way to get in touch with other people. And there is general island exploration that is on the table. So I'm going to blow you guys away here with a hex map. <gasps> Whoa, we're playing step five? Correct. If I want to go east, I don't know what to do. So you guys have explored two of these hexes. Whoa. What? <laughs> awesome. The, uh, the lower right hex is where you sh- crashed, and the upper left hex is where the shipwreck was. So this is Civ 5. We started with a settler and a and, and warrior. I would like to found a city <laughs> and set the warrior on auto explore. Yeah, I suddenly want to trade sheep for wheat. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Um, I look forward to it. Yeah, so um, we will play next week, and then I think after that we're going to go bi-weekly. Maybe. All right. Well, that's, that's just but, that's, not next week yeah, right now. We have a terrible track record. Really terrible. We'll do what we can. Thanks for showing up. It's, Jared, you got to um, hang out. You got to hang out in the hangout. So next week, I have one small lunch dinner plan, but I should be back by 8. All right, I'm going to stop the recording.